everyone, this is Teresa Ewers with New Mexico Entertainment Magazine, and we are here with the one and only Trisha Heffer. Thank you very much for meeting with us today. I know you had a very busy schedule. Well, thank you for coming out on a Sunday. Yeah, no problem <laughs> at all. So how are you enjoying New Mexico? Um, I'm liking it. I uh, I actually haven't got to see that much yet because I've been on set every day. So oh, my goodness. Aside from our locations and everything, but I haven't gotten out to explore and and that sort of thing yet. Have you gotten to experience the green chili? <laughs> I haven't really. <laughs> I let, I, although I bought some at Los Poblanos okay, that I tried to do a little cooking with. See, then you got some good stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes. I bought some green and some red. So, yeah. Although I haven't been doing much cooking either because we're usually getting home so late that it's kind of a power bar and a, a bourbon and, <laughs> and off to bed. Oh, wow. Very just bang, bang, bang schedule going on here. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the, these are... You certainly, I've been wanting a job like this for a long time where you're, you're the lead character, and, um, but it's, it's a lot of work. So at the same time, I love it, but it is, it is insane hours while you're doing it. Well, I, I realize that your career, I mean, it's taking you different places. You started as um, a model, um, large contracts, and then you made the decision to act. What led to that decision that you wanted to become an actress? Um, well, I think... I, I had never had the dream to model either. I, I never would have got into modeling or acting, but you know, as they say, I got discovered by a modeling scout. Um, I would have gone to university into psychology, and uh, that was my plan. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, I'll try this for a little bit and see, and, mm -hmm. and it turned into a, 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 a nice career. And I got to travel the world and um, see a lot of places, meet a lot of interesting people, and, and so I continued down that career path. and. About eight years in, I thought it's just not, it's not doing it for me, um, you know, uh, intellectually and, you know, I, I needed yeah. to use my brain more and, and also a modeling career is a very youth oriented career and looking, looking towards the future, what, what are my options, Should, could I go back to university, I started thinking of maybe into broadcast journalism, did a little bit of um, kind of correspondent reporting and then realized well, I want, I'd like to take an acting class, and I took an acting class and fell in love from the first moment I, I was in the class. And, you know, I kind of relate it now, looking back, to the psychology aspect. I was interested in psychology before, and there's such a psychological aspect about acting, about getting, delving into the character, into the mind of the character, and figuring out who this person mm -hmm. is, what makes them tick, what are their quirks, and that type of thing. And so I think maybe that's what drew me uh, to it um, and then so I moved out to LA in 2002 and, and got Battlestar in 2003, Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Well it, d it certainly paid off for you and you've done, let's say you've done sci-fi, you've done drama, you've done comedy. What would you say has been the most fun to take part in? Well they're all different, you know, that's the, the thing. I think if you were, if you just did one type of genre or one type of acting, it would, it could get boring. Um, you know, acting is, is essentially, you're playing, you, you know, you play, everybody yeah. can act on a certain level. Everybody, you know, puts on a little smile with the cop <laughs> if you're getting a speeding ticket or, you know, whatever it is, right? Everybody has that in them. Um, and it's the ability to be able to do that and tap into things uh, around other people and with people watching and that type of thing and, and maybe go to extremes. But everybody in their everyday life acts a little bit. Um, so... To me, it's just it's the challenge of being able to do different types of things. If you just get pigeonholed into one thing, um, then it's not as fun. Um, I mean, it's still fun, but to be able to go off and here play a Texas Ranger or, you know, go, I just did a Canadian sitcom and go play this completely over-the-top, flamboyant, very, you know, <laughs> narcissistic woman, you know, well-off woman, it's just fun to be mm -hmm. able to tap into different sides of your own personality to bring that out in the character. Well, you know, bringing up Battlestar Galactica, I mean, your character has become a sci-fi icon. How, how was that experience and how did you handle the aftermath after the show was done? Well, uh, that was my first series. I've been acting for a year and I just got extremely lucky to be able to be part of the show, um, work with amazing actors. I learned a ton from them. Um, Edward James Olmos, Mary McDonald, mm -hmm. um, Michael Truco, who's right over there, um, who's now on Killer Women yeah. um, as well, playing my brother. 
it was such a good group of people and such a, a cast that became, I mean, it ended in 2008 and we're all still really good friends and we get together yearly, you know, once a year, a big battle star get together, just the cast. Oh, and, wonderful. Um, we, we see each other quite often and uh, it was such a great experience that, you know, I don't look, I, I rarely get picked out as being number six because I don't look like her. You know, I don't walk around in a red dress with ethereal <laughs> makeup and, and a white curly wig you know I mean most people don't don't recognize me just looking at me so it's not like it follows me around everywhere I go um, I, I, every role I've done I seem to kind of uh, I guess be a bit more of a character actor because people just don't recognize me um, even from role to role quite often I, I slightly change my hair color and people People that know me well will walk by me on the street. I don't know what it is about my face. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why I had a, a good career modeling. I can be a bit of a chameleon. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a little frustrating, though, as an actor, when you, you're certainly <laughs> wanting some sort of recognition. You're wanting to get your name known because it helps you with booking other jobs yes. and, and building your profile. So there has been a few times I've complained to my husband, like, what is it? I <laughs> slightly put a few highlights in and nobody recognizes me. Like, what is it? Um, but in terms of Battlestar, I actually, funny enough, uh, sometimes people will recognize me for my voice more because number six had a very particular, mm -hmm. you know, when she, uh, voice and, and, uh, so I'll see people kind of looking at me, but they can't place me and then they'll hear me speak and they'll go, oh, <laughs> you're number six. <laughs> Yeah, I am. <laughs> well, it definitely led you to what we're here to talk about today, and that's your brand new show, Killer Women, which we're so happy to have filmed here in New Mexico. And you are Molly Parker, yes. the only female Texas Ranger. Um, how? Tell us a little bit about that, how this all came about. Well, I don't know if she's the only female Texas Ranger. In maybe her division, she is. Um, I think to this day, there really is only two or three still. Um, I could be mistaken on the exact year, but I think it was 1993 that uh, women were first allowed in. Um, we're very lucky to have the first female Texas Ranger as our tech advisor on the show, Mari Aldridge. So I think in our show with Molly Parker, Molly Parker being um, the, it's not that she's the only Ranger, but she's the only Ranger that in in her counties that she she works with, and you know it still is a bit of an old boys old boys club to some extent, not so much since 1993, you know, and women like Mari Aldridge coming in and doing an amazing job and um, proving that that uh, that women can do the job. Um, so Molly deals with that, but Molly's also, her father was a sheriff. She grew up um, in the world of law enforcement. She kind of idolized her father. She followed her father into law enforcement. Um, and she went, to, she was a state trooper for many years. So it's not like she's, this is her first thing in the world, you know. So she's, she's fairly new as a ranger, I think about a year, two years in, I think, as a ranger. Um, so she is dealing with it, but she's smart enough to know that she's going to have to face that. And she kind of lets it just right off her, unless it's blatant enough or something is uh, affecting the work that then she'll have to uh, approach the subject and deal with it. But mm -hmm. um, otherwise, she, she's smart enough to know that let, let's just get the job done. And when it comes to the physical aspects of this role, has, I mean, um, I know that you've done stunts before on previous um, projects that you worked on. Is it, are, are you feeling that same demand with this role or is it really just focusing on the acting that, you know, the script and just the lines that need to be done? Oh no, you, a role like this, I mean, I think part of the reason that I was cast in this role as well is because I can, I'm capable to do that type of stuff. I did, you know, pretty much all my own stunts on Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. I've pretty much always done almost all my own stunts. There's some things insurance won't allow you to do, and there's some things that are maybe a little bit too dangerous and, and you shouldn't do because you're going to hold up an entire production. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, in the pilot, I did 95% of the driving. I was doing 180s, and it's super fun. I have wow. so much fun doing it. Um, you know, and, and so it, it's just a, it's a balance. And um, But in a show like this, where I'm playing a Texas Ranger, if you don't see me doing some of the stuff, it just, it, it, does, it doesn't have the same quality, mm -hmm. you know. 
when, when you can clearly tell it's a stunt double because you never see their face, it just, it's not as exciting, yep. I it's think. Really good and thing. so for, for our show, we've got a very physical cast. Uh, Michael Trucco is very physical, does a lot of his own stuff. Um, uh, Mark Lucas as well. Um, I don't think Alex has had to do too much yet, but I'm sure he will. Yeah. Uh, and Marta, you know, everybody's everybody's very into the process. Everybody's very dedicated and focused on being collaborative and doing as much as we can, being smart about it, mm -hmm. knowing when to say, okay, this is something that I can't do. But um, it's it's about the whole it's about the whole thing. Well, going back to Mark Lucas, I know that your your characters are pretty heated <laughs> in the series, so tell us a little bit about the dynamic between the two characters. Yeah, in, in the pilot, the two characters were uh, fairly newly dating, um, still kind of a little bit hiding it. Uh, Molly's going through a tough divorce, not recently separated, it's been separated for quite some time, I think uh, around a year, um, been trying to get a divorce for a, you know at least half a year or more and um, having a, a difficult time with a difficult ex-husband. So she has moved on as best as she can, um, and there's issues there. There's, a, there's, there's some, uh, I don't know how much I can give away, but there's definitely a secret Molly's hiding with that. Um, and she's trying to move on. Um, so she's trying to move on when she's met Dan, and they, get, they, they work very well as a team. I mean, he's DEA and she's a ranger, but their cases do you know, intermingle every once mm -hmm. in a while, and they just have this um, ability to just, without even speaking, tactically be a team. And I think that crosses over into their personal relationship as well. They, they, they just work well as a team. I know that you have become something of a staple in geek culture. <laughs> so I was just wondering, what, what do you geek out to? What makes you geek out? What do I geek out to? Um, gosh, uh, I don't know. I I'm a big animal person. I'm a big animal animal rights advocate. Mm -hmm. um, so the the geekiest I am is probably around with animals. Um, I don't. I voice a lot of video games. Uh, I'm technologically extremely challenged. <laughs> So I don't play a lot of video games. Um, I don't do a lot with technology because I'm just, computers and me don't match very well. My free time is mostly um, spent with animals, um, hiking, motorbiking. I'm a big motorbiker. Um, so yeah, I probably, I, I guess if you'd, I'd probably geek out over motorbikes. <laughs> and animals, which you don't normally say geeking out with, with that. But you have a strong love for. I have a strong love for, yes, which is, I guess, the term geeking out for, right? Yes. 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 <laughs> and I know one of the characters, was a character that actually you played twice on two, um, did the voice for on two Spider-Man shows, which was Black Cat. What led to, I mean, how, how did that happen that you would end up doing it twice? Two completely different shows. What do you like about the character? Well, I did, I did Spider-Man Web of Shadows video game. And I actually did that after uh, The Incredible Spider-Man. I think it's The Incredible Spider-Man. Um, which was a children's cartoon. Very funny story, actually, though, because I've been doing video games where most of them were, you know, more of this type of, you know, voice. <laughs> Somehow I missed the note that this was a 10 o'clock Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> and I made my black hat very furry. And, um, and the, the, the uh, voice directors and everything, they were all laughing and everything was going well and it was good. And, and then I see an, an article, an interview when it came out and it said, Trisha Hoffer's black hat is uh, about to make every prepubescent boy turn into <laughs> <laughs> go into puberty and I went this is a 10 a.m. this is a children's cartoon okay maybe I should have made black cat a little bit, a little bit sweeter um, so when I did my next couple of sessions with them I, I told them I was like you guys could have told me and I said no it was funny so <laughs> they enjoyed it <laughs> I 
I know that you um, actually co-founded an, or, um, an organization with Katie Sockoff, mm -hmm. Acting Outlaws. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It, uh, it really stemmed from uh, our friendship and our love of motorcycle riding and, and both of our uh, wanting to do uh, more charity-wise and um, so, we, you know, it's, it's a small kind of side thing at this point. That's something we obviously want to grow bigger and, you know, I think we'd love to have a motorcycle clothing line at one point and uh, that type of thing. But our first big project that we did was um, we funded ourselves and we rode from Los Angeles to New Orleans um, and we filmed it. We hired a, all we could afford was a cameraman and a sound guy that doubled as the driver. <laughs> but uh, BMW loaned us the bikes and the follow car and we partnered with Golf Restoration Network and their text to donate campaign. So anybody, so we, you know, we, we plastered the signs on our bikes and on the car and anybody that donated with the text to donate campaign that was actually Golf Restorations, so the money went straight to them. Um, and it was, this is a couple years ago now, it was uh, after the, the BP oil spill, but um, long enough after that a lot of you know it wasn't in the news all the time mm -hmm. and everything and it was and for us it was my husband's from New Orleans uh, Katie's fiance is from New Orleans and for us it was a way to try and help continue the awareness of the the, the ongoing cleanup and the struggle that is still down there um, so we have that uh, it's called the La La Ride LA to Louisiana mm -hmm. um, that's available on the Acting Outlaws website um, for it as a digital download for a couple bucks. Um, and then we did a calendar last year that we, uh, for 2013, that's on Redbubble. And that uh, we gave uh, some of the profits to uh, Amfar. And then we've joined in other charity rides. Uh, we're doing another calendar for 2014. And um, so little things like that. And we've also joined the Tulip Ride, uh, which Microsoft puts on, uh, one of the Head guys, founders, uh, Jeff Henshaw from uh, Microsoft mm -hmm. has put on this tulip ride, and we went up last year and did it, and we've committed again this year to do it. Um, and uh, last year it was for the uh, Humane Society and for the Red Cross up in uh, Oregon, and uh, so we're committed to do it again this year. And I think this year actually we're going to do it. We're going to go in the night before and also do a screening um, at the Microsoft uh, offices for people that want to come in and see the La La Ride oh. and then do the ride the next day. And I think Katie and I are also trying to do, uh, it's in the planning stages right now, but uh, Sturgis, have you ever heard of Sturgis? Yes. Massive motorcycle rally. I think we're gonna try uh, this year and do that and do an Acting Outlaws ride and raise some money for the Wounded Warriors. Ooh. So I know you're gonna be dealing with Killer Woman for quite a while, but do Fingers you have- Fingers crossed. Yes, I, I know. I know. <laughs> so, do you have any other projects that um, are coming down the pipeline in the future? Um, well, you know, this has been taking up a lot of my my year uh, because we shot the pilot in Jan in March, and then you're kind of on hold, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, and and now we've been shooting and shooting all year. So, I mean, I have a cute little Hallmark Christmas movie coming out December fifteenth on Hallmark. I'm really excited to see. Uh, I also shot this summer. Uh, Canadian sitcom. Canada hasn't had multi-camera sitcoms for like 26 years or something and this is the first year that they've actually put started to do them again and Dave Foley who is an amazing <laughs> yep. comedian um, his show and, and an old co-star Bat on Battlestar um, Paul Campbell as well as a, a group of other actors I went in there and played De Dave Foley's ex-wife and the mother of one of the girls that that plays on the show and I just had a hoot and uh, yeah so I'm, I'm the ex-wife and the mother of the character so if it goes another season <laughs> I may be back I may be back causing some wreaking some havoc <laughs> well Trisha thank you again for meeting with us we greatly appreciate it good luck thank with the you. show thank and you. once again Tracy Ewers with New Mexico Entertainment see ya